Hey guys, Sneaky Turtle here. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be building the Space Launch System, or SLS for short. We're going to be starting out in the VAB, Vehicle Assembly Building, putting a fairing around the Command Module. This is completely optional if you want to do this or not. Only reason for that being is because it's difficult to do, uh, and it's not... It looks kind of strange. Uh, but putting a light down because the actual light gets kind of glitched into the fairing and then putting ladders down to make it look somewhat normal, semi-normal. Then making the fairing silver so that it looks like the Artemis capsule. This is also completely optional, but I figured that if I was bringing the command module in from like a Duna re-entry or something and I was going like 4,000 meters a second, these uh, structural panels could maybe work as heat shields because on the bottom of the... Uh, Artemis command module, it is uh, all silver, and there's no, like, orange like it is on the heat tiles in the game. So, I just figured that would work. Um, so I just put a decoupler down, and then putting the, uh, I don't remember what they called it. Just some weird name. Uh, but, putting down the fuel tank, just one. Um, I don't know if that was quite big enough, but it looked okay to me. And then a terrier engine. And then, um, four solar panels go on it, of course. Uh, and they, they, I kind of folded them down, because on the real one, they're at the bottom. So, I folded them down like that, and they'll just auto-rotate towards the sun anyways, so it should look fine. Um, yeah, not really much to talk about here. Just building a command module. And there we go, putting the launch escape tower on the top. And since this video is a tutorial video only, I will only be taking this rocket to orbit and not to the MUN or anything. Let me know if you want me to bring the SLS to the MUN in a future video and recreate the Artemis program or something. Put it down in the comments below. It took me a while to get this fairing you know, like accurate, uh, so I just crossfaded there because it took a really long time and that not even that looked that great so I ended up changing it later on but uh, we're now using the, uh, the uh, curvadine adapter piece took me forever to find because for some reason like I don't know if this happened to any of you but it like in the new 1.12 update it just threw all the fuel tanks so they're not grouped anymore because they used to be like grouped Kerbinon used to be grouped all together, and now it's just... If anyone knows how to fix that, put it in the comments below, because it's really bugging me. Uh, but using the Cheetah engines, fortunately it's a DLC engine. Um, uh, you could use, like, Swivels or Reliance. Actually, Swivels would probably be the right one, if you were doing this all stock. Um, but now we're moving it all the way up, putting some more fuel tanks on it because SLS is <laughs> massive. So, <laughs> uh, now putting the Mammoth engine on it, um, and then putting the hydraulic detachment things, or whatever, and then the two massive solid rocket boosters that the SLS has. Um, moving those down a little, and then I have to move them out because it, I think I don't know if there's really any way to fix that, but the bottom kind of glitches into the mammoth engine a little. So, And then we're putting some launch clamps on the rocket. Um, I think it actually makes it look kind of cool when you hit the launch clamps like that. And then moving it down, getting ready for launch. Now I'm just fixing all the staging, and then I'm going to put some separatrons on it pretty soon. Um, yeah, and putting the separatrons on now. The separatrons are very important um, to make sure that these boosters get away safely. And one thing that I forgot to show in the build time lats is strutting everything, so make sure that you're strutting everything. Because if you don't, the whole craft wobbles. And auto strut's also really nice. If you want to know how to get auto strut, basically you just have to turn on advanced tweakables and settings. And now for the parachutes. The parachutes are kind of interesting because they have to be placed on the docking port because you, if you place them inside the fairing, they won't deploy. 
if you place them on the launch escape system, when the launch escape system goes, you won't have any more parachutes. So you just have to put them on the uh, docking port, and then just move them down a little, and then into the fairing a little. And then we're just going to do a launch abort test here, seems to work. The stock launch abort uh, thing isn't very good, but whatever. All three parachutes have successfully deployed, coming down for a soft touchdown speed of 5 meters a second. So, wasn't too bad. Uh, but if you do use the fairing, um, the fairing around the capsule, you'll not, you will not be able to EVA your Kerbals. Which isn't really that big of a deal, because if you're landing them on the mud, you'll just use, uh, like, another lander. But, anyways, we're now flying with SLS into the sky. Here we go. Now we're doing a roll program that I believe SLS does. And then we are pitching over to 90 degrees by the time we hit 10 kilometers. Um, fortunately, my gravity turn this time really was really, really bad. Um, for some reason, it just wouldn't turn. I must have turned down the gimbal on the Mammoth engine or something, because it just wouldn't turn. And then finally, it started turning at the very end. Uh, but we are coming up on solid rocket booster separation. And there they go. A little bit of an awkward deployment. And since we are just going to orbit, I did want to showcase every single stage. So as soon as we reach a high apogee, I'll be separating the lower stage and firing up the upper stage. And now that we are almost at our apogee, separating the two modules, deploying the fairing, and sending the launch escape system away. All very, very quickly. And then getting ready using the explore upper stage to uh, land, or not land, push ourselves into a low Kerbin orbit. Um, but we are almost at our apogee now, getting ready to fire up the Explorer Upper Stage, is what they call it. Um, a lot of the older SLS tutorials that you'll see, they'll probably be using the, um, the Delta IV Upper Stage, and that's because that was NASA's original plan, but they could carry, like, a few more tons to the moon if they used the Explorer Upper Stage over it, because of the four engines instead of just one. And... Well, it was probably a good idea for them to do that. Uh, but now they're angling... I'm, I'm angling the rocket up. I speak English very, very well, as you can tell. Um, the reason I did that is to get the apogee in front of the rocket once again. Um, almost in orbit now. And... Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about doing like a like an Artemis recreation. I could use like a starship and stuff. I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, but in my next video, for sure, I'm going to be taking the uh, that weird like hybrid module that I delivered to space in the last video with the Long March 5. Um, that I'll be taking to Duna in the next video. Um, so that should be a pretty good video. But now I'm coming deorbiting myself at the KSC. I have tried to land in the water, but unfortunately I didn't land in the water because of atmospheric reentry. And apparently I'm really stupid because uh, so I'm coming in retrograde, and I was really confused as to why it started, like, wobbling. So it started to wobble, which was really, really weird. So I switched it to uh, prograde for some reason. I don't know why I did that, but I did. Who knows why, but I just switched it to prograde, so it just started shooting down like a dart, and I couldn't figure out why it wouldn't flip over. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, the parachute saved it because <laughs> once they deployed, they flipped it over. They just yanked it over. Um, 
But now, as the video comes to an end, I'd like to thank all of you guys for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. If you did not like the video, leave a dislike and comment below so that I can help improve the quality of these videos. Thank you. See you next time. Bye.